Satan's Next Move, Part 1. All right, so in my last video that I did, I was very focused on the bread and circus of delivery ministers. So there's just the whole practice of deliverance. No, I, the focus was on the bread and circus and the understanding that there must be follow through. It's fine. Of course, we are called to deliver and cast out demons. However, the mature, responsible thing is to make sure that once that person's vessel, their house, their temple, their body has been swept clean, that that demon doesn't go out and get seven higher ranking, not just demons, but a hierarchy of fallen angels to come in and take over. That demon, sole job, sole responsibility, once cast out of a person, it can no longer have access to its lustly, or I should say, yeah, lustful, fleshly desires. Its sole responsibility, the only thing it is allowed to do and must do, is to bring in seven more wicked spirits, wicked, hierarchy, ranking, military, fallen angels, whatever you want to call it, demons more sophisticated, more wicked, and more evil than itself. In other words, they're not, not it's, it's about snaring your soul now. It's gone beyond your addiction to whatever your fleshly, right, lust, desire, need, want, whatever that addiction is, it's now way bigger than that. It's about your soul. And it's about capturing your spirit, your soul, whatever you want to think of it. It's, it's, it, it, the game has now been changed, right? Ready Player One, and, and now you just had a demon to deal with. That was nothing. That was a fly. That was a pest. All right, now you're rid of that pesky addiction. Now what are you going to do? So this is about spiritual warfare, really, and that's what the Holy Spirit has asked me, please, just to go into it further as far as let's break down what, you know, just in this one area, right? All we're going to be reading today and covering in the Satan's next move, how many, many parts it takes for us to break down and understand and how to apply what Paul teaches us just in 1 Corinthians 2. So we'll go through all of those verses, right? And so it's, it's our next step into having a mature response into our, if, if, if you're going to be in deliverance ministry or you know someone that has been, I guess I would say, a part of deliverance ministry. In other words, the demon's been cast out of them, right? Your family, your loved ones, whatever it is. Here's what you can have available to you every day. And to keep that person who's been, who's that demon's been cast down, whether you did it or someone else did it for them, but to keep them in the word of God and to not be available for that, like I said, the next seven, or it could be more. We're told it's a minimum of seven. That's what we're told. So let's just, do, uh, that's enough to deal with. Those seven, right, more wicked ranks, of dark angels that come in with their nets. Now let's understand what Paul is teaching us here, which is the reason, right? He's in, at this time, he's in Ephesus. So he's writing this letter, right? He's been in Ephesus for a year and a half. You can read that in Acts 18. So keep in mind, he's writing to the Corinthians. Corinth is in Southern Greece. And the way of the people is uh, the what's called the sophist. And it's all about the art, art of storytelling, using high wisdom with language, the arts, the sciences, 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 uh, you know, poetry. It's basically using language as witchcraft. And it, it, it moves the people away from the humility of the gospel and of Jesus. And it moves you, again, through magic, through witchcraft, through spellbinding. That's what words are all about. It moves people into worldly affairs, right? They simply are given the gift of gab. 
I'm sure there's more sophisticated, sophisticated ways I could say that, but that's just, I'm not sophisticated. <laughs> I don't have the gift of gab, but you understand what I'm saying. So if what today's, right, today's pastors, the prophets, the new age leaders, it's no different. Paul gives us instruction today. It's more relevant today, and I'm going to go with it's more relevant by a thousand, if not a million, because the population is now a thousand or a million times more than in Paul's day, right? These modern day sophists, so what are modern day sophists? We're going to, we're going to go through this, right? Break it down again through uh, 1 Corinthians 2. And so that we can become more mature, more responsible if we're going to, I guess I would say, partake in any way in deliverance ministry. So before we dive deep into the spiritual warfare given to us here, let's, let's just set the foundation. Let's just, let's just set a cornerstone, just build a basic foundation. Okay, so what's happening here, the concept that Paul is addressing, the concept is simply wisdom. It's the very reason Paul has to write the letter. For us today, this very concept is gone. We are so programmed, conditioned, literally, not to ever discern or to understand, let alone fight against, because why? We're too woke. I'm not talking about my generation. Hopefully my generation is not partaking in this kind of stuff. My generation, I'm almost 60 years old. But younger, I'm really talking to, like, let's say, 35 and under. The young moms, the young parents out there raising kids. And the kids going into the public education system. It's way too dumbed down. It's, it's all about distraction. It's kind of like crows, right? We just follow the glitter. We like glittery things, right? That's what the sophists, today the sophists are your leading head astrologers. Astrologers, they, they really have the, the, the high hat. Everybody's following, everybody's got their own astrologer. Everybody's following that wisdom. Or they are the big healers, right? They do group healings. Okay, Raphaim, there, there is that ability. You get under the tutelage, you get under the influence of a Raphaim, a downgraded Nephilim. Yeah, you can do a group healing. You can grow back arms and organs. That's just witchcraft. It's black magic. But, you know, you're fooled. Everybody is. What's the other hi-hats? Magicians. Whatever those magicians are, it, there's, there's no such thing as good magic. It's all witchcraft. It's all fallen angel, supernatural sorcery. Or they're under the title of angel. Let's just go with that. They're an angel of light. You're going to be seeing that more and more. I promise you that. Demons. Demons look like, feel like, and are called, in the Bible, seducing spirits. They have a name. Lilith. Look it up. So whatever your name your idol has that you follow, in other words, here's the problem, you're following people, you're following humans, you're following a man or a woman. Do you know in the Bible that men and women are called idols? Look it up. I'm gonna concentrate on 1 Corinthians 2. I don't wanna get too sidetracked. Do a deep dive study on idolatry. I've already done way too many videos on that. So humans, right, they only have one weapon. And it's of, and it's rooted in science, technology, medicine, alchemy. Point is, it's all of this world. Wisdom is not obtainable in this world. Wisdom is only rooted 100%, 1 million times, right? 1 million times 100, whatever. 100% in Holy Spirit. There is no discernment outside of Holy Spirit. A, a million times, I don't know how I can say that. Unless you are so wrapped in your idols, you, have, you, you basically have no room for Holy Spirit. 
right? You just have your idols disguised as a man or a woman, a human. And it's wrapped up totally, you know, with a, with a ribbon and bow tie. It's of and in this world. It's about money. It's about silver and gold skyrocketing. It's what all, what is the main message in the Laodicean church today? All of the social media pastors and prophets. It's about a wealth transfer. It's about how Christians finally are so deserving to be rich beyond their wildest dreams. So that's the basic concept that Paul is addressing, right? Wisdom. Now, it's not that wisdom is a bad thing. Paul tells us in other writings, right, throughout the New Testament, the value of intellect and knowledge. Let's remember Acts 17.11. These were more noble than those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily, whether those things were so. Were so. so remember, be like the Bereans. And you can read between Acts 17 and 20 about their time in Berea. All right. So that's, that's kind of a foreshadow where we are today. Everything in the Bible is a foreshadow. There's nothing new under the sun, right? Let's take that another, uh, uh, I guess I want to say another step in this concept of wisdom. What Paul writes to the Colossians in chapter two, verse eight, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world and not after Christ. So today, if anyone teaches you anything and it does not do so with a Bible foundation, Bible verses, or if it doesn't leave you hungry, if it doesn't leave you thirsting for yourself, to get your head in the Bible and further discern and to obtain wisdom through the Holy Spirit, right? Through God and his word. If whatever that man or woman is teaching you and it doesn't leave you wanting to run home or to the nearest store and buy a Bible or download the Bible onto your phone, whatever it takes, if you are listening to a man and woman of this world and not of Jesus, period, that's not wisdom. It's, it's, it, it's not coming from the kingdom of God. All right. It's just the vanity of vanities. It is man made vanity. All right. So let me wrap up with this. First Peter three fifteen, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts. Be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you a reason of the hope that is in you with meekness and fear. This is responsible ministry. When you have performed deliverance, do not leave them alone to figure it out. Be ready daily with the word of the right scripture to continually turn the now cleaned out vessel, their body, of that person so they can build a defense against the nets and the snares of the next seven wicked, right? Whatever is aiming for them. Importantly, there is a difference between human wisdom and the secret hidden wisdom of God. God's wisdom includes his plan established before the world was formed to offer salvation to those who believe in the death of Christ on the cross as their, as your payment for your own sin. The wisdom of God is in for just your own study, all right? For you to give to who you have cast out a demon, if that is what you wanna do. If you're casting out demons so they can stay in the word, okay? Just, again, this is just a minimum. And we're gonna wrap up part one and come back with part two. Amen, Potters, Potter out.